in this video, I want to walk you through the exact data science resume that got me multiple job offers and interviews. Let's get into it. Because I value your time, this is the whole resume from start to finish. I have, of course, anonymized certain parts for privacy reasons, but this is largely the language and structure that I use for my personal data science resume. If you're interested in getting this template, it was actually originally designed by a guy called Timmy Chan on Overleaf. I'll leave a link to this template in the description below in case you want to check it out. For the design and layout, I really recommend sticking to just one page. It's common knowledge that recruiters spend roughly six to seven seconds when reading a resume. So make their lives a lot easier and just make it a page. Secondly, I recommend you write your resume in LaTeX. LaTeX is a software typesetting system. And in my opinion, it looks so much nicer than writing a resume in Google Docs or Word. The way I recommend you start is using a platform called Overleaf. Overleaf is like a free platform where you can create LaTeX documents. They also have so many templates and that's where I got my resume template from. So I recommend starting there and check out the Overleaf tutorials to get you going. And regardless of creating this resume or not, I think LaTeX is a great skill to have. I use LaTeX pretty much every single day to create equations for my blog posts or writing an invoice, for example, for any of my personal expenses. So it's really kind of universal and malleable to many different things. So if you learn this skill now, it'll pay off in the long run. The header is quite straightforward. It should just contain your name, contact details, and any personal websites you'd like the recruiter to have a look at. I really recommend adding links to any websites or projects that you have done, because likely these websites and links will contain more information about you than your resume by itself. Some people often add like an about or summary section, but to be honest, in my opinion, I think that's a bit of a waste of space and it's not really needed. If I'm applying for a data science role and all my past experiences have been a data scientist, I don't need an about section saying, oh, hi, I'm Igor, I'm a data scientist. The only time I think you may need a section kind of like describing yourself is when you're maybe trying to change careers. That way you can just say you're trying to pivot to a different direction. And in that case, I think an about or summary may be quite useful. After the header, the next important thing I think you should list is your technical skills. These technical skills are almost like the very, very short version of your total abilities. The reason I recommend this being very high on your resume is that the recruiter or interviewer can immediately see that if your skills and technical abilities match that required of the role. It's almost like a checklist to ensure that you meet the requirements of what they're expecting. A few things I recommend you do in this section is don't try and list so many things. If I see a resume that says, oh, I can code in Python, SQL, C++, Rust, Fortran, Assembly. I mean, you're just listing so many things. And chances are, I'll be very skeptical that you know all these things to a reasonable level. And that's not a really good look to start with. When it comes to rating your coding abilities, stick to language like familiar with or proficient with, like I've done. Avoid doing things like, Python four out of five stars or say you're an advanced user because these are quite arbitrary measures. And if you say you're an advanced user of Python, that's quite brave because let's say you go into an interview and you can't write a function, for example, then that's immediately kind of a red flag because you said you're advanced, but you can't do certain things. Another thing is that please don't write out every single Python package you know. If you're applying for a data scientist role, I personally, if I was reading your resume, would assume you already know NumPy, Matplotlib, and Pandas. You don't need to state that you know them because this is pretty much a given for any data science position. And most importantly is don't lie. I know people over-exaggerate in their resumes, but don't lie about it. Like let's say you did a C++ course for four hours. Don't then put C++ on your resume because that's just not true and you don't really know it. And if this is the case, then you might get embarrassed later on in any technical interview that you do. After your technical abilities, I recommend adding any relevant experience you've done, or if you've got no experience, add any relevant projects that you've done for data science positions. The most important part here is to demonstrate exactly what you've done, and if possible, 
back it up with numbers and figures. For example, notice how in my resume, I say things like I've used an Arima model or XGBoost model. I then mention what the goal was, like how did I apply it? And finally, I mentioned the outcome. And normally the outcome is some sort of metric improvement or financial gain. What this shows is that I know technical skills like forecasting, supervised learning, and I can link that to business impact, which are crucial skills for data scientists to have. Feel free to mention other softer skills, like I've added that I work in a cross-functional team and I lead the Data Science Journal Club at my current company. But in my opinion, the technical capabilities should take precedence over this, particularly if you're applying for junior or mid-level roles. Now we're on to education. If you haven't got any work experience, then I recommend adding this education section above the work experience section on your resume. As I have a few years experience as a data scientist, my education section is below the work experience part and it's also quite small. It's only one line and just lists my degree and the grade that I got. I keep it in because many data science job requirements state that they want a master's degree in a STEM subject. So mine's purely in to meet that checkbox. However, if you don't have any work experience, then I recommend you flesh out your education section with any relevant projects or work you've done in your university course. For example, let's say you've done a data science or machine learning masters. Chances are you've done so many relevant projects for a data science position, and you should definitely include these. Even if your degree is in something like maths or STEM subject, most of these degrees will have some sort of statistical project or coding project. Again, really relevant for a data science role, and you should definitely include this in your education section. And finally, to ensure you're not some data science robot, I would definitely add a hobbies or activity section right at the end. Some people may disagree with this and think that this section is completely a waste of space and people don't care about it. But in my opinion, it's really useful to show some uniqueness. And you never know, like the hobby you do might be a hobby that the interviewer does. And that sparks an interesting conversation during the interview. My activity section is quite small. I just list my blog, YouTube, and the fact that I play hockey quite frequently. Again, not all of it is super relevant to a data science position, but you never know, my interviewer might also play hockey and then we can start talking about it. If you want more data science advice like this, then make sure you check out my newsletter, Dishing the Data. I send it every Monday morning and it's all about my thoughts and experiences as a practicing data scientist. If that sounds interesting, then I'll link it in the description below for you to check out.